Yes, well, back with you. Hello again. Jim Burns. What we got going on here today, we're going to investigate the DC amp draw on this locomotive so we can uh, determine if we're getting close to the maximum amp draw of the Blue Nami board, which is four amps. All right. And a lot of my research and reading online, a lot of people were concerned about such matters. And it got me curious to see what ours is performing at. So what I did is, uh, let me move the camera here. I uh, took the shell off the tender and uh, I got this DC amp meter here, and I've got the power for it tied into the Blue Nami board and the power inputs from that uh, buck converter board. And then this is a Hall effect sensor with the positive lead to the motor of the locomotive. It'll do negative or positive, so either way is fine on that hull. Hull effect sensor. And then back here, I made myself a camera car. That's just one of those uh, monitoring cameras, you know, baby cam, whatever they call them, security cameras. Well, I've got it hooked it up, hooked it up to a five volt battery supply. All right. Okay, I swung the camera around. You can see what it is. It's just one of those security cameras and the battery supply. And then, if I can swing around here without too much trouble. Take a look at that uh, display on that amp meter. All right the three green zeros there. Uh, so this reads DC amperage. Not the voltage, but the amperage. So what I am going to try and do is record the uh, amp draw via the security camera as the train is running around the layout. Now here we're just running the locomotive and uh, the tender and the camera car. So we'll see if how this works out. I'll try to add the footage from the security camera to this footage off my camera here. All right. So let's give this a shot and see how we do. I wanted to touch on this subject first before we run the trains around. Um, this is the stall amperage on the Hudson. I'm holding the wheel still and this is the DC amp uh, reading that I got. Uh, I knew this was above the board's limit uh, before I started the project, but uh, I thought I'd show you a picture. I just thought to myself, well, we just won't stall it and we'll be fine. Because I knew the running amps weren't anywhere near the board's limit. So, But I just wanted to show you that this is uh, where I started with my project. So to that end, with the stall amps being that high, uh, after a couple of weeks of running this locomotive around, I decided, uh, well, maybe I better put some protection in there. So... Uh, this is an axial fuse. Uh, it's an instant blow, uh, three and a half amp. Uh, I think it'll take up to 125 volts, but uh, I put this on the motor positive 
terminal on the blue knobby board and then hooked it to the motor's positive wire and in this next picture I am showing how I installed it uh, I had a little connector here that was a perfect fit for the lead on the fuse so it's put in the uh, motor positive and uh, that's the protection uh, I have felt it and it, it does get a tiny bit warm nothing serious just a little warmth that's all as a uh, about 10 minutes of running the locomotive around so it's doing fine but it'll instantly blow if it gets up to three and a half amps and uh, I just figured I'd stay away from that four amp uh, maximum on the blue NAMI board so we just put three and a half amps and uh, all the running amps I'll show you here in a minute uh, they don't get anywhere near three and a half amps so we should be in good shape uh, it's been over a month I've been running this locomotive and it, it's done fine so so now we'll get back to running the trains around okay All right, so here we go. We're gonna start off here. Just the locomotive, tender, and camera car. We'll go back and forth and uh, see how she does. Uh, I have a piece of cellophane tape holding the uh, positive lead to the motor right in the center of that Hull effect sensor. Uh, it gives you the best reading. So let's move her out here. I'm sorry, the sound from that security camera is terrible, but now the first thing you'll notice is the amps will go up when it hits a curve, but then it drops back down. We'll start off slow to begin our trip here. Yeah, 1.7 going around the curve. It's slow speed anyway. That's the highest so far, it looks like. And we'll get a little throttle here. Yeah, we'll come to a stop right about here. Then we'll back up. As you can see, you know, we're well below the 4 a.m limit on that blue mommy board. Uh, 1.2 less than an amp here. Give her some more throttle. Doing good. Doing real good. Okay, now I'm going over to uh, hook up the uh, MTH uh, semi-scale passenger cars. There's five of them. It's the heaviest equipment I have. So we're going to put her to the test here, see how well she does. Of course, we know it'll go up. So let's take a look here. Yeah, two amps just starting out. 
2.1, the highest so far. Hitting the curve here in a second, 2.4. Highest breeding. But drops back down. We're doing good. Back up on the curve. I'm turning the uh, security camera around. Focus on the cars that I'm hauling in. Like I said, there's five of these beasts. So <laughs> it's a heavy haul on this one. Beautiful cars, by the way, those MTH semi scales. It's funny, I did a, a, a amp draw on just the cars, the lights, and uh, with all five cars on the track by themselves without the locomotive or tender. All those lights add up to one amp AC voltage, so <laughs> that's a lot of amp draw. I may be switching that to uh, LEDs in the future. But here we are, just uh, cruising around the layout. 2.2 there. Two and a half. I think there's a small grade right there at the end of the bridge. Uh, that's why it jumps up to two and a half amps. But uh, everywhere else, it seems to be around 2.2, 2, 3, 4. Except that one spot just seems to jump up. I can hear the chuff rate, just the uh, the exhaust sound, it increases. Uh, another cool feature of the uh, Blue Nami Blue. Yeah, 2.6 right there. Must be a little great. I must have been off with my laser a little. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're cruising around pretty good. It's doing well. Like I said, I've been running this for over a month now, and it's done fine. I haven't had any trouble at all with it. I did increase the voltage, if I never mentioned that before, to 16 volts. But uh, the 12 volts just wasn't cutting it. So I increased it to 16, and everything's been running great. 